So we're going to talk about cancer now. New data from NHS England shows the record-breaking 3 million people were referred for cancer checks over the past year. That's after the pandemic saw numbers dramatically decline in 2020. So there's a massive backlog that had to be dealt with. But what are the best ways to keep yourself healthy and checked if you can't go to the doctor? Well, that's a conundrum. Professor Tom Powles joins us now in the studio to help us about this. Tom, just explain. Explain this to us. Obviously, uh, the pandemic knocked everybody off their stride, the professionals, the patients, whatever. We're having to deal with that. Are we in a position to deal with that backlog? That's a difficult question, and I don't yet know the answer to it. Um, there's clearly a huge amount of investment in the NHS, and I think we all understand that on the one hand. On the other, the process that we've been through in cancer medicine has been complicated, in that during the pandemic, cancer continued to grow, to diagnose. And there are three or four components to it. Firstly, patients sensibly stayed at home, they were told to. And that created a huge amount of cancer in the community which went undiagnosed. Yeah. The issue with that is twofold. Number one is we know late di diagnosis is associated with poor prognosis and poor outcomes. So many of those patients, you know, in this report, if you look, you can see we're missing some patients. Inevitably, some of those patients that stayed at home would have died of cancer because of the, the, the disruption associated with the pandemic. Nevertheless, we're now coming out of the back of that, and I think people at home are beginning to say, I need to get back into the healthcare system. Mm -hmm. And part of that is cancer-related symptoms. And inevitably, there is a big bolus of patients who now want to have their cancer-related symptoms investigated. And that's why the numbers are shooting yeah. up. Yeah. The question is whether or not the NHS is well-placed to deal with that. Two or three important facts. The first is Macmillan suggests that 600,000 patients during this period of time have had their cancer treatment disrupted. We know cancer is a massive killer in the UK. 680,000 patients die of cancer every year in the UK. Compared to that to the number of deaths this year of COVID or last year of COVID, actually they're quite comparable. So cancer remains our number one killer, will be in the future, and now we have this huge healthcare problem. Do we have the resource to deal with it, which is your question? The human resource, we probably don't have right now. So I work, I'm the director of Bart's Cancer Centre. Uh, we continue to work through this pandemic. We have shortage of doctors and nurses. We put adverts out. But we don't have the resource in the UK as it currently stands to fill those posts. Many people left during the pandemic. Being a nurse, being a doctor during this difficult time was very challenging. Also, new opportunities, new opportunities came up for many, for many individuals. How can we now attract this new group of healthcare professionals into cancer, firstly? That's really important. And then secondly, how do we train them quickly? to get them up to speed, because you can't just put an advert out for a whole group yeah. of new cancer doctors and say tomorrow, please turn on the radiotherapy machine. I mean, I suppose a part of this will be importing doctors from overseas. We heard, we just saw the Prime Minister on a recent visit to India talking about trying to make it easier for lots of Indians to come with their visas. I mean, would that be an obvious solution, do you think? Do, we're going to have to start importing more medics to deal with the crisis. We're going to have to look at healthcare. We're going to have to look at what we need. And we do need more people. It's really clear. Um, it's throughout the UK. It's actually a European problem. My mm. friends and colleagues in the US as well um, have similar issues. During this period of time, for whatever reason, um, cancer treatments have continued. They continue to advance. It's a super exciting area. You know, we've approved five or six new drugs in just the cancers I treat. But we, the, the, the healthcare resource, the people required, are not there at the moment in nursing, in pathology, in radiology, in oncology. And we need to bring more people in. And as we get better at treating cancer, we need more people to do that. And this problem is not going away quickly because as patients live longer, cancer will inevitably grow in people. We're not going to cure this in the short term. So it is a terrific time to be in cancer, but we don't have that resource at the moment. And I suppose the elephant in the room is the state of the NHS and whether or not it is sustainable, whether or not it can continue in its current form. Yeah. And I know <laughs> that, look, you know, as NHS medics are very sort of evangelical and, and you know, sort of emotionally attached to it. Yeah. And also the short termism of politics, obviously politicians often don't want to tackle it. Do you yeah. see it last? 10, 15, 20 years in its current form, or do you think something needs to change? Massive question, I know. So that's a tricky question. <laughs> and I don't know if I'm qualified to answer it. Um, 
I have worked in the NHS for 20 years and I'm, and, you know, I'm the director of a cancer centre, so I should be able to have an opinion on it. But it is such a political issue that it's actually quite hard to speak about it. Um, do, am I attracted to the principle of free healthcare at the point of delivery? Of course I am. I can't imagine there would be anyone who wouldn't be. Yeah. And aren't we exceptionally lucky to have that on the one hand? Um, and so that's point one. Point two is, are we in a position where the NHS is struggling in some areas and are there things that we need to look at under the bonnet and try and improve it in the knowledge that that may threaten some of those ideals that we pursue? That's a discussion that we probably need to have. I'm not the person to answer that, but we do need to have that discussion. Okay. Professor, you keep on doing what you're doing. We need you and people like you, lots more people like you. Oh, sweet. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much thank indeed. You. Uh, Professor Tom Pauls is the director of Bart's Cancer Centre. If you're affected by that, yeah. get in touch with us at GB News or GBviews at gbnews.uk.